Welcome guys, HJ here, and today I will be showing you how to dye your socks. So I'll show you how to make socks like these pictured here, and I also heard that you can use Rit dye to dye your Air Force Ones. I would think the durability would be terrible, but who knows? To begin, we'll go ahead and we will start to heat up some water. Most of the directions say do not boil, and then you will add salt to the water. So there's lots of different dye options. For me personally, I'm just using a less expensive option, which is RIT dye. So RIT has two different types of dyes, synthetic and the cotton. So I like using synthetic with the cotton in combination. Also, I have used tulip dyes too. Um, both are pretty decent. They're not the very best, but it'll work well. So depending on what type of method you're using, most ways to tie dye, you wanna completely saturate the socks, especially since this version that we're doing here is going to be, the socks are completely one color. So if you would have your socks that are wet in one area and then dry in another area, sometimes it can make the dye as it seeps into your socks not be a consistent color. And this is RIT Synthetic. And then I also, which you don't see, I add in the RIT Cotton for the same color of yellow. It might not be the daffodil yellow, but it's pretty much the same. And if you want yellow hands, don't wear gloves. If you prefer the color of your skin, then I would recommend definitely get some rubber gloves because otherwise it will cause your skin to look like you have jaundice. On the back of the bottle, it usually has a recommendation for how long you should leave your socks in, but it does depend on how dark or how light you would like your socks to be. So if you'd like more of a pastel color, I'd recommend much less time. If you'd like it to be darker, leave the socks in a little bit longer. And then I put it in a plastic bag just to help the dye absorb more before rinsing out the socks. And usually I'll put them in the bag and then leave them overnight or at least for 12 hours or so. Once you're done with that, definitely put them in the washing machine. I usually put them in the washing machine twice and make sure that you use the hot setting just in case any excess dye were to come out. You'd want it to come out in the washing machine, not on your shoes. Finished socks, you can see the socks that I left in the dye a little bit longer and the socks that I pretty much took out right away and put them in the washing machine. Okay, this is my super advanced tie dye technique. Is it my favorite? No, but for some reason people like it, so I keep on doing it. Same method, you're just gonna go ahead, put your socks in the water first, and then you're gonna do a weird crinkle design and then just start tying them up with some rubber bands. So if you're doing two different pairs, let's just say one is going to be purple and pink, the other is gonna be uh, pink and blue or something, make sure that you keep them together. You don't wanna get any dye on the wrong color socks. Um, another thing to keep in mind is the placement of your dye. So do you want the dye more on the front of the socks, the back of the socks, or all over the sock? So obviously you want it to be pretty much all over, but try to keep it as equal as possible. And now I already mixed up my dye in a bottle and I'm just squirting it on. If I was gonna do this again, what I would probably do is not squirt it in the bottle like that and actually have it in a bowl, which you'll see in the next video, um, where I pretty much just dip it into the bowl. So there's a lot of different techniques that you can do. Is this the coolest technique? I don't know, you tell me. So if you mix your dyes in a bottle, make sure to label the bottle. I have a few times not labeled it and I would think a certain color is pink or purple and it's the very opposite. So make sure to label your bottles. 
So these have been heat set in the microwave and I'll show you a little bit later in the video what I mean by heat setting in the microwave. And these pears right here are all done. So they've been washed two times with hot water and then they've been dried. Make sure that you do not wash them all together or the different lighter colors can bleed. Mixing things up a bit, we're gonna do some butterfly socks. So these should be available on my website. Make sure that the socks are completely wet and then wring them out. We don't want them to be soaking wet. So you're gonna take your sock that is pretty much completely damp and you're just going to put it in a little bit of dye. So here you can see just a small bit of dye and then I'll put them together. So this is going to be more of a uh, sky type effect or a cloud effect. And then since we didn't use boiling water, we are actually going to heat set it in the microwave for two minutes. Then you're gonna get your water and your dye. So this is tulip dye. Sorry, I used the dye packaging before. Go ahead, get your socks, make sure that they are damp. You want them to be completely soaked, but then wring them out so they're not soaking wet. And you've probably noticed I'm only using glass containers. That's because we are going to then heat up the containers in the microwave and then in the videos before you saw how I was putting the entire pair of socks in the microwave, you can do that too. So once you've soaked your socks, but then have wrung them out, then it's time to add your dye. So we'll do water and then dye. And then you can see the containers that I'll be putting them in. And then for the dye, you can really decide what part of the socks you'd want it on. For me, anyways, even though my house is super spotless, I feel like as you walk in your house wearing socks, they always get a little bit yucky on the bottoms. But if you have dye there, it doesn't really show up as much. So totally up to you. But I always try to make sure that the area that I'm walking, like the sole of the sock, I always get dye and then usually I'll do a little bit of dye on the toe as well. Microwave for two minutes to heat set the dye. So yes, I did mix up my dye in a shampoo bottle. So the original idea of putting it in the shampoo bottle was so then I could put the dye directly on the socks instead of putting it in the container for this method, obviously I'm putting it in this little glass container first, but if you do decide like my previous video where we take the bottle and then pour the dye directly onto the socks, you have to get specific bottles for dyeing or you can use other ones. Even a Sriracha bottle will work, but the shampoo bottles work terribly. So don't do that unless you are just gonna put it in a glass container like this. There's a ton of different videos that you can always research on how to do it, but I basically learned that the best experience is trying it for yourself. So just get a pack from Nike or wherever, and then just try a whole bunch of different ways and see which way you like the best. I went against my recommendation for don't mix socks because they technically could bleed into each other, but they're both a pretty cool color, so I didn't mind too much. This is what I put in my washing machine, but it's totally up to you on what detergent you want to use. One of the forums that I came across said to use white vinegar to help it set the dye even more. And I mean, so far it seems to be working pretty decent. So I just use about two tablespoons of the vinegar and then it's up to you on how much detergent you want to use. It really depends on how many socks you have in there. I would say you can use any setting. The main thing is you want to use hot or extra hot water. The reasoning behind using hot or the extra hot water is because a lot of times you will still have extra dye in your socks that need to come out. And rather than it coming out on your client's shoes, you'd rather have it come out right now in the washing machine. And here are the finished socks. So 
pink and purple I used from Tulip, and then the blue is from Rit. And over here is my favorite person, my little baby. So which dye would I recommend getting? Honestly, it's up to you on what you're going for. So if you want a solid color sock, I would definitely go with Rit dye. Also, Rit has a lot more color options. However, for tie dye, I would actually recommend Tulip. And the reasoning is this is purple Tulip dye. It looks like there's actually pink in there, I didn't add any pink to it, that's just the dye. Yes, I washed them together, but I've experimented enough to know that Tulip adds like a funky little color sometimes. So it is kind of cool to get a tie-dye effect while only using one color. Doesn't always happen, but a lot of times it does. And this is how I pack them up. I got the little Mylar packets from Amazon. I can link that below. And then I just print out on a little sticky paper, my logo and everything, and then they're good to go. And I might still have a few pairs of socks available on my website if you'd like to order. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and comment what you'd like to see next. If you didn't really like this video, that's okay too. You can always comment what I need to work on. Thanks guys, take care. And I'm just gonna go ahead and link some videos right here that may or may not be helpful for you. Watch out for my body rolls, high kicks, high kicks, this is how we do it. Watch out for my body rolls, watch out for my body rolls, high kicks, high kicks, this is how we do it. Once a thousand. If anybody knows Leslie Hall, you are awesome. If you don't, Google Leslie Hall right now. You're welcome.